Intel's new i9 is here, along with the rest of the 10th generation lineup, all sporting pain in the ass names like this, the 10900K, I will henceforth refer to as the new i9 or the 10th gen i9. Now Intel claims this is the world's fastest gaming processor, and they're not wrong, except they kind of are, sorta, it's complicated. Now, does the new i9 reign supreme over their rivals in Team Red, or does it fall short? Well, let's find out. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, Intel's latest and greatest, the new and shiny i9, is dressed to impress. Sporting 10 cores and 20 threads, up to 5.3 GHz on two cores and 4.9 GHz on all cores, and a shockingly impressive and attractive price tag of $488, it doesn't look too bad now, does it? Well, let's play spot the difference. Which of these chips is the new i9 and which of them is the old one? If you're having a hard time telling, you're not alone. Besides the fact that you have 49 extra, currently useless and inactive pins in the new socket that you need a new motherboard for, these are almost identical. And the similarities don't end on the outside. On the inside, this is the same 14 nanometer process node that Intel's used for the last four generations of their CPUs. It's the same monolithic design with the same base architecture, really, and oh, it's literally the same chip as last year, with two more cores glued on. See, last, last year's i9 had 16 megabytes of smart cache available to it, which works out to two megabytes per core. This new one has 20 megabytes, which, if you do the math there, well, two plus two. Intel has added something this year though. Much more complicated turbo boosting. Last year, all we had to care about was the single and all core boost numbers, but this year, it's a lot more complicated. You now have to worry about the Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 speed, the Turbo Boost Max 3.0 speed, the all core and the Intel Thermal Velocity Boost all core slash single core. Basically what that means is for a brief nanosecond, it might run at 5.3 gigahertz on up to two cores and uh, 4.9 on all cores, but realistically you'll find it running at 4.8 gigahertz most of the time on all cores and might occasionally turbo up to 5.1 or 5.2 on one of the two now preferred cores. So it's not new, but more cores and more clock speed means more better, right? Well, let's take a look, starting with the gaming results. These were all done at 1440p on max ultra settings with an RTX 2080 Ti. So starting off with Battlefield 5, you can see that the i9s as a group are pretty impressive here. You're looking at a 12% performance improvement going from the Ryzen chip to the new i9, and if you're wondering why the new i9 is technically slower than the old one, that's mostly within margin of error for these tests. When it comes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the results are a little clearer. You're looking at at a 16% improvement going from the Ryzen chip to the new i9, and you're looking at a very slight improvement if you fancy overclocking it too. When it comes to PUBG, again, a very similar story. The discrepancies between the new and old chips and overclocked are, again, honestly within margin of error for these tests, and you're looking at a 13% improvement if you went from the Ryzen chip to the new i9. It's a lot closer uh, in Fortnite, though. You're looking at only a 4% difference between the 3900X and the new i9, and again, margin of error really takes into account most of the discrepancy here between the two chips. Productivity-wise, it's a different story. While the new i9 may have two extra cores and a higher clock speed than last generation, it still can't be AMD's 12-core 3900X. At stock settings in Premiere Pro, it was around about 2% faster than the last year's i9 9900K, but the 3900X, more importantly, was 3.6% faster than that, and even more importantly, for less money. Now, if you're willing to overclock the new i9, you can squeeze out a good bit more performance and even beat the 3900X by a reasonable margin here, mostly because Premiere cares more for faster cores than it does for having more of them available. With that said, I do need to talk more about the overclock in a second, so keep that in mind. When it comes to Blender, unlike in Premiere, doing the BMW test render showed that even the 5.1 gigahertz all-core overclock I managed on this stably 
isn't enough to beat the 3900X. It gets within a second, which is definitely good, but the important thing to note here is that when you overclock this chip, it draws 285 watts of power. Compare that to the 3900X's 140, 245, that's a very sizable difference. You're getting technically less performance for double the power usage. And that trend continues with Citibench. Looking at the single threaded performance, you can see that the new i9 and the 3900X are pretty much tied here at stock settings. Of course, you can overclock the i9 and get about a 2% performance lead in single threaded performance, but when looking at multi-threaded, the Ryzen chip just walks away with it. The Ryzen chip is about 15% faster than stock, uh, the stock i9, and even if you overclock the i9, it's still about 9% faster, which is kind of mental. Like I mentioned earlier, what's even more impressive is that the Ryzen chip peaked at 145 watts of power draw, and on the 240mm AIO I was using to cool them all, it's peaked at 79 degrees Celsius. Compare that to the uh, new i9, and it's honestly worlds apart. The new i9 draws 220 watts of power at stock settings, which interestingly, if you divide that by the number of cores, works out to 22 watts per core, which again, if you compare that to the 9900K, is almost identical there too, really hammering home the point that they are basically the same chip, but with a couple extra cores added. Now, going back to temperatures, the new i9 sat at 92 degrees Celsius, which is pretty toasty by comparison, and when overclocked, sat at 96 degrees Celsius, and that was only because I had to set the AIO, the, the pump and the fans, to max RPM so that I could keep the thing from thermal throttling. Also, if you're interested why the 9900K was at 96 degrees Celsius and the chip that drew 40 watts more power, the new i9, uh, was at 92, that's because the new i9 has solder connecting the die to the IHS rather than the 9900K's thermal paste. So, don't buy the new i9, buy the old one, right? What, what was that thing called again? I've forgotten. Um, oh yeah, competition. Those AMD guys. Their Ryzen chips are a sight for sore eyes here. Honestly, I think going so long without reasonable competition has made Intel really drop the ball because for less money you can buy two more non-glued on cores and while sure you drop a couple FPS in games, does it really matter? Because you claw that back in productivity and, and more in some cases as well. Oh and then there's the upgrade path. Now I know some people are a bit salty about AMD axing support for 4th gen Ryzen chips on B450 and older boards, but if you're planning on buying the new i9, you already need a new motherboard anyway, and so if you're planning on you know, building new, go pick up a B550 board and you're then set for another at least one more extra generation of Ryzen, potentially a refresh after that too, maybe, and so you get that extra you know, upgrade ability, plus even more importantly, you have a 16 core option that you could upgrade to or go with from the outset if you need that extra performance. I think Intel have chosen to go with the new motherboards this refresh, not because they had to, like I said, the pins that are on this new CPU are currently inactive and basically useless. Uh, I think the reason they've gone with that though is so that when they try and sell you next generation's chips, they can say, hey, we've got backwards compatibility, you can drop into your existing motherboard and you, you now have PCIe Gen 4 support too, which sounds great, except AMD offers PC, real PCI Gen 4 on both B550 and X570 today, and that's not to mention the fact that you'll need at least a mid to possibly high-end motherboard to support this new i9 because of the massive amounts of power that it needs to draw through the VRM. So let's round up. Is it the world's fastest gaming CPU? Sure, why not? But honestly, at well over 100 FPS at 1440p, who cares? If you do and you have more money than sense, then sure, go pick one of these up, go pick up one of the high-end motherboards you need for one too, and live happily. If, however, like the rest of us, you have to work for a living, then, and specifically if gaming is your sole objective and you want the best of the best that you can get today, then the 9900KS is a better option. You get the same performance in games, and with a late overclock, you can 
potentially get even more performance than the new i9 since there's less cores that need extra powering and again live happily. With that said if you want to do anything else, if you want to do you know productivity, some work, anything in between then a Ryzen chip is a better option for you. It's a better value for money. You get more cores, more productivity performance and like I said we do take a slight hit in games uh, this sort of range, I don't think it matters all that much. Now, with that said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this a chip you are impressed by? Are you underwhelmed? Is this a chip you, you need today? Or would you rather go and buy the 3900X or even the 3950X instead? Anything at all, do let me know in those comments down below. Now, if you're interested in checking out pricing for these chips, specifically the new i9, the old one, and the 3900X, I'm going to leave links to them all in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this. And I might even throw in a link to the motherboard that I used here, the MSI Z490 Ace, which, by the way, review of those boards coming very shortly, as well as a, a Z490 Explain video. Now, if you're interested in seeing those videos do hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one and you know those reviews as well and you can also check out the rest of the links in the description down below if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos now i have a load of stuff down there there's merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs there's also stuff like streamlabs obs if you want to start streaming and you know support me since it's an affiliate link and a lot of other stuff too feel free to check them out some vpn options as well i'm going to leave a few videos over there maybe the cpus playlist so you can check them out and otherwise that is pretty much it if you have any questions do leave those in the comments down below but otherwise we will see you all in the next video